Hi everyone, my name is Isabel Borok. Over the last few months, I wrote a research paper on implicit gender bias and its impact on female students in political science, specifically in United States universities. I am currently a sophomore at Miracosta High School and I live in Los Angeles. Amber Burrell, a PhD candidate at the University of Washington, mentored me throughout my research and I am very excited to be sharing my findings with you today. Originally, I was interested in why, despite large strides in gender inequality within our society, women remain very underrepresented in governmental positions with influence and reach. This stood out to me because one of the US's most basic principles of democracy is and has always been representation proportional to population. But when women continue to make up more than half of this country, but less than a quarter of most elected officials, there is a discrepancy. Isabel, so identify will you, sorry, yeah. will you um, just start to share your screen one more time? We're seeing a loading screen. Oh, sorry, okay. Thank you, sorry to interrupt there. Yeah, that's <laughs> okay. So to identify the roots of the dis this disparity, I researched how the bias experienced by women in US university political science departments has repercussions on their career paths. First, it is crucial to comprehend the dynamics of the student professor relationship in which the professor holds complete dominance. The teachings and influence of the professor possesses the potential to shape students' career trajectories significantly, given their control over the local academic environment. Additionally, within US political science departments, women constitute only 27% of tenure track faculty. A concerning study focusing on female students and professors in poli-sci revealed that 43% perceived their gender identity to have a negative influence on their experiences. Researchers Becky Francis and Christine Skelton considered how predominantly male professors face a challenge due to teaching being their occupation and it being widely perceived as feminine. This can compel male professors to emphasize and retain their masculine traits, which can manifest as bias in the classroom. This expression of masculinity by male professors tends to play a significant role in shaping biases. In education, bias, thoughts, and stereotypes play a pivotal role in shaping the behaviors and actions of all educators. According to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, implicit bias occurs automatically and unintentionally that nevertheless affects judgments, decisions, and behaviors. In contrast, bias can be very obvious. Explicit bias includes things such as openly holding prejudices against one group of people. Decisions are made via two systems in the human brain. System one initiates unconscious quick decisions that can have implicit bias, while system two develops thought out decisions that can have explicit bias. Since educators are commonly pressed for time, their brains tend to utilize system one, which leads them to unknowingly project bias through simple decisions. In political science education, where predominantly male teachers may impact female students, I reviewed implicit gender bias. This bias involves a subconscious favoring or holding of prejudices against individuals based on their gender. The authority and influence held by professors can lead to the projection of biases onto students shaping their educational experiences. A crucial aspect of this dynamic is symbolic interactionism, where learned behaviors and associations are formed through repeated interactions. Researchers have illustrated how these interactions generate symbols, aiding our minds in establishing connections and acquiring habits from others. In a classroom setting, professors may unknowingly perpetuate biases through repetitive teaching patterns, with symbolic interactionism serving as a transfer of bias from educators to students. The concept of doing gender further emphasizes that gender roles emerge as a consequence of human interaction. Within these interactions, individuals in positions of power can influence the norms within their immediate surroundings, contributing to the construction of doing gender. In the context of political science departments, professors may reinforce stereotypes, potentially influencing students' perceptions in behaviors in ways that can alter their career trajectories. Dr. Linda Powell studied implicit gender bias within her university's journalism department, focusing on its impact on female students. Despite the department being predominantly women, a notable gender disparity was displayed with men making up the majority of those engaged in the student-led academic journal. Dr. Powell compiled an array of data combining interviews with female students and demographic information on the journalism department. This, through this analysis, she distinguished a significant correlation a lower representation of female journalism professors correlated with a reduced presence of women contributing to the academic journal. Applying Dr. Powell's research to the realm of political science education, I sought to establish a similar connect correlation with the impact of implicit gender bias on female students and their career decisions. This involved a thorough examination of political science department demographics and the demographics of political science graduates' careers. I aim to draw a connection that shed light on the influence of implicit gender bias on professional trajectories in political science. In political science education, a prominent gender imbalance persists with 72.4% of professors being men across all universities and colleges in the United States. 
this ratio has exhibited minimal change over the past decade, indicating a persistent gender gap within the field. Conversely, the dynamics on the student end of the spectrum tell a different story. A growing number of women are enrolling in universities, leading to a substantial increase in female students majoring in political science. The percentage of women graduates with a political science bachelor's degree rose from 36.8% in 1977 to 51.7% in 2022. As women make significant strides in closing the gender gap as students, a contrast emerges among professors. This prompts examination of the gender makeup within professional political science majors to identify if the underrepresentation of female professors has implications for the career trajectories of female students. In the first most common occupation for poli sci graduates, law, women now consistently outnumber men in law schools, surpassing men in the graduation rate since 2017. However, despite their numerical majority in legal education, women remain underrepresented in the legal workforce. In 2022, only 38.3% of lawyers were female, while 61.5% were male. These statistics underscore the challenges women face in transitioning from education to professional domains within political science. Government is the second most chosen career path with almost an identical gender composition to that of law. In the US government, women hold approximately 25% of elected positions across local, state, and national levels, reflecting an unsubstantial presence in political leadership. The third primary destination for political science majors is business. Here, women comprise about half of entry-level employees, but this proportion significantly reduces as position level increases. This revealed the persistent challenges in breaking through the established gender barriers. In response to these hurdles within the business industry, women are increasingly starting their own businesses at higher rates than men. This has substantially improved female representation, however, the industry remains male dominant. Over the course of my research, I was able to establish a correlation between gender representation within U.S. political science university departments and the subsequent career trajectories of female students. The data demonstrates the underrepresentation of women in influential positions within these departments, despite constituting the majority of the potentially vulnerable population. This disparity places female students in a position where they are susceptible to the actions and biases of professors. In reviewing Dr. Powell's findings, I was able to identify how implicit gender bias can impact students as it is transferred to them through symbolic interactionism. Taking a broader perspective, an examination of the career trajectories of political science majors revealed a disconcerting pattern. While women comprise over half of political science graduates, they find themselves in the minority within the top three career paths of political science majors, law, government, and business. It is crucial to emphasize that this research is not intended to blame anyone. Instead, it serves as an attempt to highlight the connection between professors holding implicit biases and the subsequent impact on their students' career trajectories, contributing to the overarching issue of women's underrepresentation in political science. Additionally, it is imperative to acknowledge the limitations of this research as the conclusions are derived solely from existing data. In short, since women are underrepresented as political science professors in the US university departments, female students are diverted from continuing careers in political science because of implicit gender bias exerted onto them by their predominantly male professors. And these are the references that I used. And also recently my paper was published in an academic journal. So you can scan the QR code if you'd like to view it. Thank you. Awesome work and congratulations on your publication. That's very exciting. Um, what do you think can be done to really, you know, what's an action step that you would like to see implemented at the university level in order to mitigate some of these um, problems? I think the promotion of women to these positions of influence and power is definitely the biggest thing because simply by providing more representation, we can see that bias decreases significantly and it will further encourage female students to continue on with these career paths that they originally want to go into. Wonderful, thank you so much, Isabella. Wonderful job, congratulations.